I love to tell the stories of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story it did so much for me. And that is just the reason I tell it now to thee. I love to tell the story, it will be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. Amen. I love to tell the stories, oh, wonderful it seems, and all the golden fancies of all our golden dreams. I love to tell the story it did so much for me. And that is just the reason I tell it now to thee. be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus. came to church today, are you? And you just heard the sermon. God so loved the world. I want to bring you greetings from your Hope Channel family. I'm honored to be here with Hope Channel Zambia. We have 54 channels around the world, President Mwanza, 54, broadcasting in 60 languages. An important part of Hope Channel International is Hope Channel Zambia. So we are just so thankful we can be with you here at Rusango University. And I believe that God is going to work in a miraculous way this week. Do you believe that? Yes. And God told me that I'm going to be changed this week, doctor. 
And I believe many lives will be changed. In fact, I believe there'll be some people here who will decide to spend eternity with God as a result of this week. So I just want to pray as we open God's Word together that He would tell us that old, old story of Jesus. You see, His love was a reflection of the immeasurable, unfailing love of God. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. We have come here to hear a word from you and to worship you in spirit and in truth as we begin this journey considering the radical teachings of Jesus. As we look at what Jesus taught about God's love, I pray that you would speak to our hearts in a life-changing way. The miracles would happen here by the power of your spirit that lives would be changed, people set free, wounds healed, sins forgiven, by the power of Jesus' name. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. People are asking all kinds of questions, like the one you see on the screen, if you can see the screen. Where, where did I come from? What is the meaning of life? Is there a God? And, and if there is a God, what is he like? Is he a ruthless tyrant just waiting to punish us for eternity? What is God like? Well, the Bible gives us a bold answer. In one short phrase, in 1 John chapter 4, can you see it if you can see the screen? If not, in your Bible it will tell you 1 John 4 verse 8 boldly declares, say it with me, God is love. God is love. That same author, behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. But perhaps the most beautiful text in the whole Bible records the words of Jesus in John chapter 3 and verse 16. Spoken in the context of of an interview with a religious leader named Nicodemus. And there the scripture says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. What does it say next? That what? Whoever believes in him. Does that include you? Does that include me? Does that include the stranger that is within our gates? Whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And today I'd like to share with you a story. A story that Jesus told. It's recorded in Luke chapter 15. Jesus, who is the revelation of the immeasurable and unfailing love of God. I'm going to read from my Bible in Luke chapter 15. And it says there in verse 1, Then all the tax collectors and sinners drew near to him to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes complained. Why did they complain? Do you know? Why they said, This man receives sinners and eats with them. They were suggesting that if Jesus received sinners, that he must be one of them. But Jesus was not approving of what they did, but he was revealing to them the immeasurable, unfailing love of God. And so he gathered with the publicans and the sinners and he ate with them. And when he heard the complaining, the Bible records in verse 3 of Luke chapter 15, he spoke to them this parable. Now I have to tell you, when I was a young lad growing up, I heard about the lost sheep and the lost coin and the lost son. I thought it was three stories. But it's not. It's just one. 
He spoke this parable to them. We might call it the parable of seeking the lost because the sheep was lost and the coin was lost and the son was we could call it the parable of seeking the lost but 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 I might call it the parable of love in action because as we consider this beautiful story we will see a revelation of the immeasurable and unfailing love of God so let's see how the story begins What man of you, verse 4, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? No, I need some help from someone who's good at math. If he had a hundred sheep and he lost one, what percentage of his sheep did he lose? If you didn't say 1%, you need some remedial math help. 1%. You say that's not very much. There'll be some more lambs. Maybe someday he'll have 105 sheep. But Jesus is trying to teach us about the immeasurable and unfailing love of God. And even if one is lost, what does the shepherd do? Well, let's read on. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after the one which was lost until he's found it? And notice then, verse 5, And when he has found it, he beats it and says, You stupid sheep! That's how we treat each other sometimes. That's how some people think God treats lost sinners. And you better, you made your bed, you better sleep in it. You better pay for your foolishness. That's not the God that Jesus taught about. I just want to use my favorite Hebrew word, hallelujah. That's not the God that Jesus taught about. Jesus says when he finds that one lost sheep motivated by love, that's why he went, because he's the good shepherd who knows his sheep and he's known by his own and he's willing to lay down his life for the sheep. When he finds that sheep, what does it say he does? He laid it on his shoulders. Now, I don't know if you've ever picked a sheep up. Has anyone here ever picked a sheep up? Have you been near some sheep? What do sheep smell like? Not so good? But he picks that sheep up and he puts it on his shoulders. What does it say? Rejoicing. He's not beating the sheep. He doesn't drag the sheep back. He puts it on his shoulders rejoicing. And he calls together his friends and his neighbors, I'm reading on, saying to them, verse 6 of Luke 15, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. I say to you, Jesus says, verse 7 of Luke 15, Likewise, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. By the way, that's a a hyperbole, actually, because everyone needs repentance, but the 99 just persons are the ones criticizing the ones who've come to hear. That's the scribes and the Pharisees, the just people. And Jesus says they don't bring any joy to God, but when one lost sinner repents, there's joy. So why does heaven rejoice when one lost sinner Sinner or sheep here is found. Why? They rejoice because they are reflecting the immeasurable, unfailing love of God. By the way, I have a question for you. Does the sheep know that it's lost? Yes or no? Come on now. 
Does the sheep know it's lost? Caught in a thicket away from the fold, does it know it's lost? Yes, it knows it's lost. Man. All alone at night, hearing the howling of the wolves, it knows it's lost. What doesn't it know? It doesn't know how to get home. Well, I'm telling you, there may be someone here, and you know you're lost, or watching on Hope Channel Zambia, you know that you're lost. But I want to tell you, you can find your way home on the shoulders of the Savior. He's not going to drag you and beat you. He loves you with an immeasurable and unfailing love. Now, I want to tell you, that's good news. And if that was the end of the story, I could just say hallelujah. But it's not over. The parable continues. Verse 8. Or what woman of you having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it. She's got ten coins. Now many scholars will say this isn't pocket money. This is actually her dowry. She's probably wearing it. Ten silver coins. She's a ten coin woman. That's precious. It's a symbol of her relationship. She loses one of those coins. Now help me, the, the ones with math. We lost one percent of our sheep but there's 10 coins and she lost one, so she lost how many percentage-wise? 10%, right? 10% is lost. What does she do? She takes the house apart. Did you know that you can be lost inside the house? You can be sitting in room 10 and lost. You can be sitting in room five and lost. You can be standing on the platform and lost. Does the coin know that it's lost? You say, that was easy. Quacha doesn't know when they're lost. You say, well, of course, Derek, that's stupid. The coins don't know they're lost. But Jesus could have chosen something else. He could have chosen a goat, or he could, but he chose a coin. You see, the coin was precious, but the coin did not know that it was lost. Could it be there's someone here today or watching on Hope Channel and, that's lost and doesn't even know it? Do you know the woman is taking the house apart, looking for you. And the story goes on. And when she is founded, well, we, we're in verse 9 of chapter 15. Even if you didn't have the rest, if you knew how the shepherd acted when he found the sheep, you would guess that when the woman founded, found her coin that was lost, that she would rejoice. And the Bible says, Jesus telling the story, that she says, rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which was lost. She calls her neighbors and her friends together, rejoice with me. I found the peace which was lost. And Jesus says in verse 10, likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner, lost and doesn't even know it, who finds her way home. There's joy in the presence of the angels of God. So, so why do the angels of God sing when one lost sinner coin is found? Why do the angels sing? Because they are reflecting the immeasurable, unfailing love of God. Do you know when you were found that angels sang? When you were found, I saw you singing with the choir. 
I know you've been found. Do you know the angels sang when you were found? Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Angels sang when you were found. Why, if that was the end of the story, we'd say, I, I think I've got it, Pastor. Whether 1% is lost or 10% is lost, whether they're lost and know it but don't know how to find their way home or lost and don't even know it, the immeasurable love of God is seeking them. If the story ended there, we'd say that's, uh, that's a lesson to learn. But the story continues. It's one story here. He said to them, verse 11 of Luke 15, a certain man had two sons. Now, just track with me for a second. Seeking the lost. Lost sheep, what percentage lost? One percent. Uh, lost coin, what percentage lost? Ten percent. Lost sons? You say, well, Pastor, I'm not sure. Maybe it's 50 percent. Because it was one out of two. But maybe it was 100%. Let's just hear the story. See what we learn. The Bible says a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of the goods that falls to me. In other words, he said, give me my inheritance. Now, I don't know how it is in Zambia, but I'll tell you what it was like back home. You don't get your inheritance until your father dies. Is that how it is here too? So what is this younger, rebellious son saying to his father? I wish you were dead. Just hurry up and die and hand me my inheritance. Now, I have two sons, as Dr. Mwanza. I've never had one of mine say that to me, but my human reaction would be, <laughs> what would the human reaction be if a child came to a parent and said, hurry up and die so I can have my inheritance? It might be, even when I do die, you won't get an inheritance. You miserable child. <laughs> Give me the portion that falls to me. The Bible says at the end of verse 12, so that father divided to them his livelihood. I missed that in earlier readings. I thought he just gave the younger son the share that was his. But it says he divided to, he divided to them. Now, the older son would get two-thirds as the firstborn. So the older son gets two-thirds, and this younger son will get how much of the estate? One-third. He divided the inheritance to them. Big question. Which of the two sons appreciated the inheritance given to him, to them, as a revelation of their father's immeasurable and unfailing love. Which, which of the two appreciated the inheritance? Well, let's uh, find out. After not many days, verse 13 of Luke 15, the younger son gathered all together and journeyed to a far country, and there he wasted his possessions with prodigal living. Would you say he appreciated that gift of the immeasurable, unfailing love of his father? Yes or no? No. But if you hyperspace to the end of the story, his older brother complains to the father. By the way, if I read the text correctly, the older brother has received how much inheritance? Two-thirds of the estate. And he says, in verse 29, 
Lo, these many years I have been serving you. I never transgressed your commandment at any time, yet you never gave me a young goat. Excuse me, I gave you two-thirds of the estate. You never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours, doesn't even say my brother, does he sound like a nice fellow to you? As soon as this son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots. By the way, there's no reference earlier in the story to harlots. I think he's just making his younger brother look as bad as possible. You killed the fatted calf for him. Would you say that that older brother has appreciated the inheritance as a revelation of the immeasurable and unfailing love of his father? Now let's go back to the other story. The younger brother spends everything, and then the Bible says in verse 14, when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land. I'm in verse 14 of Luke 15. And he began to be in want. And then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, verse 15, and sent him to for the fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything, the Bible says. But when he came to himself, verse 17, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father. Key question. Has he grasped, finally caught a glimpse of the immeasurable and unfailing love of God? No. No. He's just hoping that his father will at least treat him like one of the... Now that's better being treated like a pig. But I want to tell you here today, whether you're here at Rusangu or watching on Hope Channel, Zambia, I'm here to tell you that you will not be treated like a servant or slave when you come home. <laughs> you will be treated like a son or daughter of the living God. He hasn't caught that yet. He prepares a little speech. He says, I will say to my father, verse 18, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. True or false? True. Verse 19, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. True or false? From his perspective, it's true. Make me like one of your hired servants. He prepares this little speech. And he arose, the Bible says, and came to his father. I imagine him rehearsing the speech. Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I love this next text. <laughs> Luke chapter 15, verse 20. Because it says, and when he was a great, still a great way off, his father saw him. There was a day when I was a far way off and the father saw me. What does that tell you about the father? This wayward son is still a, a great way off. And his father saw him. What does that tell you? He was looking for him. How often do you think he went out to look? Once a week? How often do you check your uh, text messages? Your emails? You think he checked once a week? You've got a lost loved one. How often are you going to check? Come on now. How often are you going to check? Every time you have a free moment, you'll be there looking. Am I right? 
if you have the immeasurable love of the Father in your heart. And when he was still a great way off, his father saw him, the Bible says, and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Now this younger son had just come from a pig pen. He looked like a pig. He had probably at times acted like a pig. And he smelled like a pig. And the father comes to meet him and says, take a shower and I'll shake your hand. Maybe. That is not the God we serve. I want you to get a picture of the immeasurable and unfailing love of God. The Father is running towards you. He's running towards you in room five. And is that four and three and two and one? Ten, nine, eight. The Father is running towards you. And before you say, God, I slept with the wrong lady, or I did this to the wrong person, or I did... Before you get your speech done, he throws his arms around you. Because he already knows your speech. He knows all things. He knows what you've done. That's why God so loved the world that he sent his only son. And he throws his arms around you. He embraces you and he kisses you. Bring out the best robe. Put it on him. Ring on his hand. That's a sign of sonship. Sandals on his feet. Not a servant, but a son, a daughter. Bring the fatted calf here. Kill it. Let's eat and be merry. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. You know, I love this story because it is, this father is reflecting the immeasurable, unfailing love of God to his younger son. But he also reflects it to the older brother. Do you know if you read the story, the father comes out and pleads with his older son. Why a human would say, stay out there, you miserable fellow. Don't even appreciate the two-thirds of the estate I gave to you. Complaining you don't even have a goat. But the father goes out and he pleads. He pleads with his son to, to, to celebrate the return of his brother. Why, why does he do that? Why doesn't he just leave him out there? He said, son, you're always with me. And by the way, in case you weren't paying attention, all that I have is yours. I gave it to you. It was right that we should make merry and be glad. For your brother was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. He pleads, why? With the older brother, because he wants both of his sons to experience the immeasurable, his immeasurable and unfailing love. I came here to Rosanga. I'm here on Hope Channel, Zambia, to tell you that Jesus came to tell you that God is not out to get you. He's out to love you. <laughs> Amen. He wants to reveal to you his immeasurable, unfailing love. Whether you're a lost sheep, a lost coin, or a lost child, he loves you with an immeasurable and unfailing love.
And so I have a simple appeal for you today. I'm going to make some appeals during this series, but I don't know if you'll be here to, tomorrow or the next day or the next program on Hope Channel Zambia. I just know, know today is a day that you could say, I want to accept the immeasurable, unfailing love of God for me. I want to spend eternity with a God like that. Huh? So I want to make a simple appeal, and, and I moved myself. I want to say, Jesus, find me today. Let your love be revealed in me today and through me today. Is there someone who'd stand with me and say, God, thank you for your immeasurable and unfailing love? Is there someone who'd stand and say, God, I, I want to know your love today? Wherever you are, you can stand in your, in your home if you're watching on Hope Channel Ken, Zambia. Maybe somewhere else in Africa. There's hundreds of young people standing here at Rusangu. God, thank you for your immeasurable, unfailing love. How many of you would say, God, thank you for saving me? Raise your hand. Thank you for saving me. All right, you can put your hand down. Maybe you've never asked him before. Is anyone for the first time say, Jesus, save me? I'm going to give you an opportunity this week. Hands raised, hearts open. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we've caught a glimpse of the immeasurable, unfailing love of God. We pray that during this series that we would not only experience your love, but hear your word for us as we prepare for the soon coming of Jesus. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen.